First, I'd like to thank the Hostos Center for the Arts and Culture, who are our hosts and, uh, and co-presenters tonight, uh, specifically Wally Edgecombe, Jack Jacobs, and Felix Arrocho. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank these wonderful, wonderful artists who have chosen to come together to play as a quintet for the first time to celebrate Astor Piazzolla's 90th birthday. He would have been 90 today, and I think, I think he would have enjoyed this program very much.
Thank you very much, everybody, and a very good evening. Uh, we're delighted to be here in the Bronx uh, this evening, and we're delighted you uh, came up to join us on uh, the 90th birthday, what would have been the 90th birthday of um, the great uh, tango composer, jazz composer, classical composer, call him what you will, uh, Astor Piazzolla. Um, the first piece we played, Concierto para Quinteto, as its uh, name suggests, uh, is a great way to introduce the five instruments of this uh, quintet, which is, of course, a very diverse um, set of tone colors, and I now have the pleasure of introducing them all uh, by name. On my right here is Pancho Navarro on guitar. Lydia Kaminska taking Piazzolla's role on the bandoneon. Pedro Giraldo, bass. And Leonardo Suarez Paz, violin. And my name is Tim Ribchester, and I wrote the uh, program uh, information, so uh, if you um, have any further questions, I don't want to talk too much, I want to get on with the music tonight, um, but we will all be happy to meet with you uh, in the lobby after the concert and answer any questions you might have about this fascinating uh, music. So we go on now uh, to play two pieces, which show very different sides of, personality, of Piazzolla's personality. The first is Mumuki, uh, which was written in 1986, uh, and is named for his um, dog actually his pet dog, um, and begins with a beautiful guitar cadenza and uh, then proceeds with a piano cadenza and the whole mood is very mellow and intimate and uh, has some of the wonderful harmonies that he uh, loved to use in his later music. Um, and then we go back in time a little bit to the uh, 1950s when uh, we play after that La Muerte del Angel, which is a uh, fast and furious uh, fugal piece, uh, very influenced by uh, the fugue writing of J.S. Bach, who he loved. <laughs>
Well, the next piece we're going to perform now is uh, named Kicho, in honor to one of uh, tango's greatest uh, bassists, who performed with Piazzolla uh, in his first quintet, and to whom Piazzolla wrote this uh, piece to feature him. It is actually not uncommon for Piazzolla to write uh, pieces dedicated to his own musicians. He also wrote uh, Contrabajissimo to the next uh, double bass player for his second quintet, Console, and he also wrote uh, Esqualo, dedicated to Mr. Leonardo's father, who is an amazing uh, piece as well, and uh, along with other pieces that he wrote for different composers. So this is uh, Kicho, who, by the way, is also, I would dare to say, my very favorite tango bass player.
Pedro Geraldo, ladies and gentlemen. Our last piece before we close the first set um, is going to be uh, Adios Nonino, uh, which was written here in New York in 1959 um, after Piazzolla had studied with Nadia Boulanger and been told that the tango was his true musical home. Um, before that, he was trying to be a symphonic composer. So after he uh, studied with her, he went back to Buenos Aires for a while. Uh, what he was doing down there confused the tango community. Um, so he came up to New York and uh, tried for a while to create what he called a jazz tango fusion, and he was marketing it like that. Um, but that didn't really work out for him either, so he ended up back in Buenos Aires in the 1960s. Um, before that happened, he received the news in New York that his father had passed away. Uh, this was in 1959, and he said that this melody came to him almost instantly. Uh, it's become one of his most famous melodies, uh, which I'm sure many of you will recognize, and it's uh, been imitated many times not just by other composers, um, but also, I think, in his own work, too. Um, it uh, was something that came so much from the heart. Um, so, Adios Nonino is our final piece.
my name is Leonardo Suarez Paz, and uh, we just played um, a concert um, about the music of Astor Piazzolla, which, uh, who was a, a great composer uh, of Argentina. He lived in, uh, in New York and he composed in New York a, a lot of his great tunes. And, um, and today was his 90th uh, anniversary. So that's why um, we were just uh, playing this wonderful concert with his original music, original arrangements for his quintet. My father, Fernando Suarez Paz, was his violinist for a long time of the quintet, um, Piazzolla's quintet. Actually, they play a lot in New York. My name is Jesse Blumberg, and I'm the founder and artistic director of the Five Boroughs Music Festival. And what we do is we do all kinds of music, uh, mostly chamber music, but chamber music in a, in a broad sense. Uh, we do things like this, we do tango, we do early music, we do new music. Uh, we had a string band at one point, we've had string quartets. Uh, we've had vocal recitals and things like that. So we do lots of different kinds of, of intimate uh, performances like this where the audience really gets a hands-on experience. We had always wanted to do an Astor Piazzolla program. We decided that we could do it on his 90th birthday. And uh, Wally Edgecombe here at Hostos was very excited about that too. And, and because we're a movable musical feast, we're always looking for um, different venues. We don't have a home of our own. We're, we're all across all parts of the city. So. Um, this was our first time at Hostos, and Wally was really excited about this music. He had been a fan of Piazzolla for a long time, and we said, let's possibly do it on his birthday if we possibly can. Um, we had known Tim Ribchester, the pianist, uh, for quite some time, and uh, he had been very interested in doing this program of quintets. He introduced us to Leonardo, Leonardo Suarez Paz, who I believe you just spoke to, and um, it had all sort of went from there. We found the rest of the group, just really, really wonderful musicians, and, uh, and I think, as you saw, it was a great show tonight. So. The piece we're about to play is a very special piece of music because it was the last piece uh, that Piazzolla wrote for his uh, quintet, which uh, basically was his main uh, performing activity through the 1980s. Um, and uh, it was recorded in 1988, again here in New York, um, by that quintet. Um, and it hasn't been frequently performed as a set in its entirety um, much since that date. We, we've sort of talked amongst ourselves about it, and we don't know of many performances of the complete work, or, or any, in fact, that have, have taken place, um, although some probably have. Uh, but this piece, I think, is very important, not just because of where it sits in Piazzolla's life as a um, sort of swan song for, for the group that ended up being his uh, most stable uh, group of colleagues. Um, but it's also a piece, I think, where he realized his vision of becoming a symphonic classical composer, um, writing on a large scale. It's about half an hour long in total. Um, and uh, using the tango language to achieve that ambition that he used to have to uh, write for symphony orchestra. He actually found his true voice in this quintet formation. Um, and this piece represents uh, his sort of culmination of what everything he, uh, whatever he was able to do with that group. <laughs>
My name's Tim Ribchester, and I'm really delighted to be in the Bronx tonight performing the works of Astor Piazzolla. We just finished a, a concert which was a lot of fun for us, um, and for me it was a lot of um, work uh, over a period of many years actually to come to the point where I could put something like this together. Um, I've admired Piazzolla's music for 10 years. Um, I came to the United States partly to study his music in detail and to work with the musicians who uh, knew him and to learn from them. And um, some of the musicians here tonight, also of my generation, have also studied with uh, and learned from these musicians. And in the case of Leonardo Suarez Paz, his father was actually Piazzolla's favorite violinist. So it's a great honor to be playing with these wonderful musicians. Um, and uh, to be able to play Piazzolla's music in New York uh, is also very uh, special because um, this was really his city almost as much as Buenos Aires. He grew up here um, and his music draws from jazz and from classical music just as much as from tango uh, in many ways and so it is like the fabric of New York it's diverse it brings many uh, different elements together uh, from all over the world and that's why people from all over the world love it so much. It's classic tango music is uh, wonderful wonderful fascinating stuff and it, great for dancing too it has such powerful rhythms and of course he draws on all of that but he also loved Bach and he loved Gershwin and for him new meant being able to open your ears and open your mind and absorb what's out there in the world of music. He has a very set identity, a very solid identity um, as an individual composer. When you hear his music, it only takes a few seconds for you to recognize that personality there. And that's what's so remarkable, because he draws from all over the world of music, you know, all over music history. We're talking Bach, Stravinsky, Miles Davis, you know, Bill Evans, and then you have all the tango people too. So all these personalities have left their mark on his imagination. But at the end of the day, what you're hearing is Piazzolla. It's not somebody doing jazz and doing tango and doing classical. It's somebody who's doing things their way. And that's, for me, what's so beautiful about it as a pianist, because I love playing opera, I love playing Bach, I love playing jazz, you know, in my spare time, and not professionally, but, but I love uh, hearing all these uh, different styles and trying to find out, you know, the best way to make music on the piano. And he really is one of the composers I feel most free and most inspired by. It.